what is a DDC and how does it work? DDC stands for Direct Digital Controller. DDCs are controls operated by microprocessors. Digital means they operate on a series of pulses, and all control is executed in software and run in a computer based on instructions called control logic. The input to and output from the DDC are classified into four types of signals, namely digital input, digital output, analog input, and analog output. When the contacts of a switch, relay, or other devices closes, it completes the circuit. This on or off behavior is called two-position control or binary. However, it has traditionally been called digital. Therefore, in DDC terms, it is generally called digital input or DI. The on or off output either provides power or not. The lamp is either powered on or off. The motor either runs or stops. The valve is either closed or open. In the same way, this is called a digital output or DO. A varying signal such as temperature, humidity, or pressure is called analog signal. In DDC terms, it is called analog input or AI. The most common type of analog input from instruments are 0 to 10 volts DC and 4 to 20 milliamperes. In the same way, the variable output to adjust the opening of a damper or to change fan speeds is called an analog output or AO. Instruments produce analog signals while our computer needs digital signals to process. So, between the analog device and the processor, there is an analog to digital converter or ADC. These ADCs are usually built in within the computer. The minimum components of a DDC controller are the following. First is the power supply, which powers the computer board at a low DC voltage and the I.O. points with DC and 24 volts AC. Next is the computer board to run the control software. And then we have the I.O. modules with screw connections for wires in and out, analog to digital, and digital to analog conversion hardware. And we also need the communication port to enable the computer board to have the software loaded and updated when required. In addition to the four minimum components, other components include relays, terminal blocks, indicator lights, human-machine interface or HMI, and so forth. When all these and other components are installed and wired together in an enclosure, this will become our controller called DDC panel. In a typical HVAC system, analog inputs to DDC are provided by measuring devices such as room and duct temperature, pressure, and humidity sensors, while digital inputs may come from auxiliary contacts from fire alarm control panels, actuators, motor starters, and so forth. On the other hand, analog outputs are produced by the DDC to regulate the opening of a damper of a variable air volume or to control fan speeds among others while digital outputs are produced to start or stop the condensing units, air handling units, humidifiers, or to open and close dampers or valves. When the DDC receives signal from the input devices such as the sensors, the value of the input signal is compared to a certain value that is desired or maintained by the system. This desired or maintained value is called set point. When the input goes out of the set point range, the DDC will then give command to operate certain pieces of equipment to bring back the value of a controlled variable within the set point. The new value is then sent back and measured again by the sensors. This is called feedback and then fed again to the DDC to repeat the process. This whole process is called control loop. HVAC controls, or controls in general, are basically a system that tries to duplicate the thought of the system designers. 
Because the system designers are not probably the one who will make the detailed design, nor who will program or commission the system, his or her thoughts and ideas of how the system should work must be clearly conveyed. This is done through a written control sequence, also called sequence of operation. There are two approaches in specifying control system, performance and detail. In the performance specification, the resulting performance is set out and described, but the means to achieve this performance is left open. In the detailed specification, the components and how they are connected are all defined. The sequence of operation is used by HVAC designer following the performance specification approach. Another important document necessary in order to design the DDC for HVAC system is the I.O. list. This is a tabulated list of all the input devices, such as the sensors, and all the controlled equipment. It also shows the type of input and output signals going in and coming out of the controller, and the quantities of each type of signal. The sequence of operation and the I.O. list are important in addition to the airflow diagram and schematic diagram for the control system. When all these documents are in place, the control engineer can now make the program in accordance with the desired control sequence, set points, and I.O. points. Programs are made using general purpose programming languages. This allows the control system to perform any control function and software may be customized for each application. Three styles of application programming are commonly used for general purpose languages. These are the text, graphical, and ladder logic. Text-based languages resemble standard computer programming languages. Graphical programming, on the other hand, is based on logic flowcharts. It is much easier to read and comprehend or visualize than text-based programs. Ladder logic language, as the name implies, uses ladder logic programming. These are Boolean logics implemented in software rather than using actual relays. DDC can be simple or complicated depending on the requirement of the system. No matter how simple or complicated the system is, DDC offers a great deal of benefits in monitoring and control of HVAC systems, especially in large installations where it is impossible for maintenance personnel to perform such tasks. Proper design and selection of hardware, software, communications, and creating the right program is the key for effective control systems.